here today basically to tell you how we see uh, wage data in Surrey, uh, the kind of work that we've done with it, so it's kind of the incident that uh, we're here today to talk about and what we think are the sort of main priority areas going forward. So, this is Surrey. Um, it's a fairly large county, um, 1.2 million residents, half a million tonnes of waste each year. It's a two tier authority, so we've got 11 districts and boroughs, for some of you here today. Um, and also, there's the county council who uh, used to be in Surrey, but now is swallowed up by London. So, it's a good change there. so, lots of districts, lots of waste, lots of data, and uh, lots of problems. So, this is how we see waste data in Surrey. Obviously, the uh, householders produce the waste. Uh, they split it into recyclables or residual waste. Recyclables go off to MRF to be sorted or to a reprocessor. Um, the residual waste goes to energy from waste to landfill. So that's very simply how the waste works, although it's a little more complicated than practice. The, in terms of the, the flows of data, I suppose there are several. And the first one is the one that we've been talking about already today. So this is the information about missed bins. Um, that comes from the crews is then written down or it's um, uploaded via written cab technology to uh, the council, in this case one of our West British Authority and British Borough Council, and then it's fed back to the householders by various means. So that's effectively your first data flow. And as we've seen, it is huge on its own. It's £650 million pounds of savings we're talking about, so crazy. Um, doing it 11 different ways all the different districts and boroughs, huge area for savings. But concerningly, that's only one small part of the waste system in Surrey. There's a lot more, and in other two tier, tier areas. So the second chart, you see it, is the actual waste data that you get out of the reprocessors. So in Surrey, the waste collection authorities retain some of their recyclables, therefore they'll get waste data from those reprocessors, um, often in the form of spreadsheets and towards the end of the month. That's then fed back to them. However, the county council also retains a load of recyclables and it deals with all the residual waste. So you've then got all that data from all of those different places. They then come back to the county council's contractor, CETA, and then that flows to Surrey County Council. So quite a convoluted process. And then you end up with the waste data in two different places. It's at Elmbridge and it's at Surrey. So then, we've got a load of back and forth between those two authorities. So, Cambridge Borough Council would need to claim recycling credits. Um, to do that, they need to tell Surrey County Council how many tonnes of recyclables they've collected so they can get the payment. Then Surrey needs to go back and forth and audit that. So you've got the back and forth there. Surrey have got a load of waste data that Elmbridge don't have, which they need to know for their credit claims, and also for reporting nationally. So that's another flow of data back the other way. So that's the third, the sort of third data flow, I suppose. So then, it needs to all be reported nationally um, via waste data flow to uh, the DEFRA. And that's done separately by Elmbridge, it's done separately by Surrey County Councils and separately by all of the other waste collection authorities in Surrey. So, of course, the data doesn't match between the Surrey County Council and Elmbridge. The DEFRA have got queries, they come back, back and forth. Um, it takes a good while before that data is finalised in the format that everyone can absorb. And it takes a, a good quarter, a good three months. And you know, we need to make decisions um, as, a, as, a, as a waste team. We need to know what, exactly what's happening, where the problems are, and deal with them. We can't wait that long. I suppose finally, the, the final flow you see is the, getting the data back from waste data flow. So, so we compare how our authorities are performing against um, all the other authorities nationwide. And if you want end of year figures, you know, it's October now, we're still waiting for 2014-15 waste data. We can't see what anyone else is doing. And that's six months ago. So it's, it's really quite a, it's a slow, frustrating process. So waste is just such a huge data picture. And um, in 2011, we sort of realised, we, we did uh, a pretty big piece of work looking at how we can make efficiencies across the partnership, not just in data, but in other things. But data was um, acknowledged as a key area particularly these parts of the puzzle, so two, three, and four, it's an in-county waste data management. Um, it was identified this is all very manual, lots of paper waverage tickets being used, lots of um, checklists and dust carts being used, not much automation, 
quantity slow. Um, so three to four thousand hours a year of staff time to do all this data across the county at a cost of 75 grand, which is significant. And of course, as I mentioned, we've also got the speed problems, so a big delay in getting hold of the waste data and getting to use it. A uh, big delay in making recycling credit payments to the boroughs, which is not great for them. And um, a lot of the error creeping in there, because it's being manually handled everywhere, all these different places, the possibility of human errors creeping is huge. And so we're seeing sort of average error rate of about 10%. Not good. So, to deal with this, uh, way back 2011-12, we looked at bringing in a new waste data management system. This would be a cloud-based system. It would automatically receive the data from CETA, so that's a, a huge load of the waste data. Um, but it also allow easy upload in Excel format for other contractors with the potential for them to automatically input into it at a later date. It would automatically and immediately generate reports for waste data, show how we're doing waste-wise, um, and um, create a waste data flow returns so that the data can be reported nationally and do that instantly. That means that we've really got a much better handle of what's going on with waste and where the problem areas are. We can communicate information quickly to our members, to our residents, and uh, to our waste teams. And also, it means you can pay recycling credits a lot quicker. So, looking at some of the costs and the other benefits, um, the capital cost of getting this new system in was about 60 grand. Um, annual maintenance cost about 20 grand. And staff time, that's where all the saving comes from, about 15,000 for, uh, uh, for your staff cost versus 75 grand, as we were, we were using the existing system. So, over a four year period, it's a saving about 135 grand. Much faster, the waste data is available at the moment monthly, but it will become real time when everyone links into it. Uh, payment, credit payments monthly rather than six monthly, better for boroughs, better for everybody. And um, accuracy of the data is much, much better, so less than 1% error. However, it wasn't at all quite intended to get us in place. Uh, there were huge delays, um, various reasons. Um, the contractor that we used. Uh, basically said they could give us a, an off-the-shelf system which had, which would need a tiny little bit of tailoring just to, to get right but just wasn't the case. Uh, end of the other way around was, it was a huge amount of tailoring at a tiny bit but it was off the shelf. There was no such thing as an off-the-shelf system for something as complicated as this. Um, so I suppose a bit of naivety there. We, to get it ready and working and everybody integrating with it, a huge amount of extra staff resources was required. Um, we've still got those people in place now just finishing it off, but it has just gone live this month, so um, a little bit of good news there. Um, and things, so the, the, the sort of bottom line, 135 grand saving will probably be eroded quite a bit, but going forward, <coughs> see you on here, we are going to see savings from reduced stuff time and all the other benefits. So, what is it, if we go back to our colourful diagram, what is it meant in terms of uh, how things look? So there's less of a to and fro now between the different authorities because all that data is sitting centrally on the web based system for everyone to access whenever they like. Um, by the end of the calendar year, the data will automatically be going to waste data flow, so that'll be a lot quicker and not as pain for everybody, and there'll probably be fewer errors and queries and time spent in with those. CETA system is already directly linking into it, so that's a big time saving there. We want all the other reprocessors to link into it, and across Surrey, we want to standardise. Um, we want to manage material much more centrally, so there'll be fewer contracts, so that should make things a little bit easier. Fewer, bigger contracts. So, that's what we try to deal with. Still huge areas to deal with here. DCI are obviously looking at this in great detail, which is fantastic. Um, Federal collection of misbins, as you've been calling it. Um, service information, um, getting that to the residents, and it's also delivering campaigns in a better, more efficient way, so that's fantastic news. We also like to see improvement here, so getting faster data from everybody else. Um, and also financial data, we, we'd like to know how much it costs for, uh, for people to run their collection services, how and what gate fees people are paying, so it's more in real time, so we can see if everyone's getting a good deal and what we need to do to improve. However, if you want to speed that bit up and make it faster, I think there needs to be sort of more investment in this area, in speeding that up and um, maybe something like a standard specification if people wanted to introduce a system like this and, um, and save a bit of cash. 
a, a standard spec would be very useful because I get the feeling we were kind of early adopters and uh, and uh, struggled a bit because we were one of the first to introduce this kind of system on this kind of scale. <coughs>